Hey, good morning, New Life Church. We are glad that you join us. Happy New Year. It is January 2nd, 2022. Well, at least when we're broadcasting this, if you watch it in the future, it's a new year. And we're excited for a new year. We got all kinds of things that we're hoping for, planning for. We're hoping to change some habits. We're hoping we just want change, right? We want some things to be different. And so I'm excited for what God is wanting to teach us, what he's going to show us in just the time that we have this morning. So, hey, before we get into the message, before we take some time in worship, I just want to encourage you, find a time to get out to our men's or women's Bible studies in the next couple weeks. Next week, or uh, this week, actually, Tuesday, and then or Monday night, and then Tuesday morning, we have our men's group. It will start this week back up. And then the following week, the women will start back up. I believe it's on the 11th at 7 o'clock here at the New Life offices. And so if you don't know where that is, it's on the north side of Adrian, right across from the original Spotted Cow. Um, we're in the office complex right where TLC Bank is. And so we hope that you'll join us at some point uh, for one of those two groups. The other thing is this, uh, we also have our Youth Co. one night happening in a couple weeks. And so mark that on your calendars. I believe it is actually on 16th. That's the date I believe it is. It's going to be 6.30 out in Tecumseh. Get your middle school, high school, and college kids out there. And then also mark your calendars because the weekend of the 19th and 20th, I believe it is, there's going to be a Youth Co. one night away. And it's going to be a retreat. And so we want you to be prepared for that. We're going to try to keep the costs as low as possible. But it's going to be one night overnight. And it's just going to be Saturday into Sunday. It's going to be a great time for your students to grow in their walk with God. And so we'd love for them to have a part or be a part of that. If you want to, if you want to give this morning, we would love for you to do that. Let me just tell you this. Like, I've not seen more blessing in my life in times where I give. And you know why? Because we're doing what God has asked us to do. And so I believe that this year is going to be a year, as Malachi says, is as we bring our tithes into the storehouse, that we just see the floodgates opened. Like, I believe that this is going to be a year of floodgates for a lot of people. And we're going to begin to see God do some things that we could never imagine. So if you want to give this morning, you can do that. You can give it through our app or online. Super easy. You can do it by texting or you can do it by the old fashioned way and just mailing it in. And so the address is on the screen. The other thing is this, uh, we're excited for what's ahead. And in four weeks, our church will now be seven years old. I can't even, I couldn't even imagine a long time ago that we would be at this point already. Like it just seems like those seven years have just flown by or six years have flown by. But we want to celebrate. And so the last Sunday of the month is our anniversary. We invite you to come out and join us in person if you haven't yet. And we just want to see God do some pretty incredible things in this year ahead, which we believe he's got for us. And we believe it's going to be a year of faith. And so this morning, we're going to start this year off by just singing this song together. And so would you join Blake as he sings this morning? When I feel the fear come, I won't run away, and even in valleys, your presence is enough. When I feel the shaking, oh, I will stand my ground. Oh, your presence is enough, because you are with me. Father, you for me, fear you never conquer me, cause I belong to Jesus, I'm never alone, I'm never abandoned, fear you never conquer me, cause I belong to Jesus. I 
Cause I belong to Jesus I'm never alone I'm never abandoned Oh, fear you never conquer me Cause I belong to Jesus So let's have some fun this morning because I believe that everything was created with a purpose. Okay. And here's, here's why I believe this. Okay. So at one point someone was using their hands to dig and they said, Hmm, I think we could do this a little bit more efficient. And so then they go and they create something that's going to be a little bit more rigid. That's a little bit more uh, stiff. That's going to be able to dig deeper and dig harder than you can with your hands. And so they created a shovel. Right? And so the purpose of a shovel was to dig, right? So like the shovel's purpose is for digging. Now we look at it and we go, okay, um, let's try another one. Somebody at some point decided, hey, we should learn how to write, right? And so they used to use like little ink and uh, feathers and they would write like that. And someone said, there's gotta be a much easier way of doing this. And so someone thought, hey, I should create a pencil, right? And so they created a pencil and they had lead in it and they began to write with a pencil. Now the purpose of the pencil was for writing, for communicating. There were so many other purposes than just one thing. Then you go forward here and you can look at all the different technology and all the things that 
we use on a daily basis and we can go, what's the purpose of our phones in our pockets now? Well, someone thought it would be a great idea to be able to get a hold of anybody anywhere at any time. Or they thought it might be a great idea to track you at any time. No, I'm But anyways, well, maybe. But here's the thing. Everything was created with a purpose. Everything. Even you. You were created with a purpose. From the very beginning, right? You go to this, this scripture in Genesis 1.1 and it says, In the beginning God created the heavens and the earth. He created it. And over a period of seven days, he did different things. He created the land and the sea. He created the air. He created the sky and the earth. He created um, the birds and the, the animals. And he created plants. And he, cre he created all these things. But on the sixth day, he created man. In all these other days, he looked at it. And what he created, he said it was good. And each and every one of those things had a purpose for sustaining what he would create on day six, which would be you and I. You see, God from the very beginning in, in his creation process had a purpose for everything he created. So for you and I, what we need to understand is you were created for a purpose. And see, what's interesting is this. When we look at all that God has created, just think about the trees that he created for a minute. How many different things have come from a tree? I mean, like, I have these little wood blocks, right? Someone decided, hey, I'm going to create from a tree these little blocks with, or some kid could stack them or they could use them for, I don't know what they created it for, what the purpose was, but these were created to stack. You know, that's the whole point of them. They were stacking blocks or to build things out of. You know, but like I said earlier, like a tree, someone looked at a tree and said, oh, we can use that and we can create the outside lining of a pencil. Or someone looked at a tree and wood and said, oh, we could use that to heat and to keep us warm when it gets cold. Or someone looked at it and said, oh, let's create a chair, right? Let's create something that someone can sit on. Instead of sitting on the ground, let's create something that's off the ground. You see, everything was created with a purpose. And within that purpose, or within that thing, is the future potential for other things. But the original purpose never changes. And what was created for never changes. Now, it may um, have different things that come from it, but the original purpose never changed. You see, here's what I believe. Everything created has a purpose, but the main purpose never changes. You see, when God created man and woman, he said, here's the purpose. The purpose for you, man, you, woman, is to be fruitful and multiply, right? And that's the first part. And then he said, fill the earth and subdue it. And then he says, rule over. So he gives us this purpose from the very beginning of what it is and what it would look like for you and I to live on this earth. And so he says, be fruitful and multiply. I think that's pretty obvious when it comes to man and woman, right? Fruitful and multiply. Like you have kids. The kids came because of fruitfulness, right? And, and then that begins to multiply. And you are now in, um, I don't even know how many generations old because of somebody way back then having kids and then them having kids. And so the world and the earth gets, lar the number of people on this earth gets more and more because people are doing what they were created to do, the purpose for which they were put on this earth. And the second part is this, is fill the earth and subdue it. To subdue it, if we paraphrase the, like the meaning of it, it would just simply mean to harness its potential and use its resources for your benefit. You see, that's what we've been doing from the very beginning of time. We've been harnessing the potential, right? And using the resources for our benefit. Now, sometimes uh, we've been overusing it, right? And so even as believers, we have a responsibility for the things that God has created here on this earth and to use them responsibly. But God gave them to us to use for our benefit. And so we've created all kinds of things out of the things that he created from the very beginning. You see, if we look at the purpose in which God gave us, we can really summarize it down to two things, to reproduce and to rule. Those are the two things. You see, God had a plan from the very beginning. And he has a plan for you and I. Because the thing that we know and the thing that we understand about God is he is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Like, and if we ever question what it is and what our purpose is, we go back. We go back and we read the stories. And we listen to them over and over again. I gotta tell you, I'm in this kind of a season right now where I'm needing more faith than I've ever, I've ever used or ever had before. 
And so like I'm reading more scripture, I'm reading more books of people that have done great things in faith and, and just trying to encourage myself to go, okay, God, you got this. You've done it before. Would you do it again in our generation, right? God, you've done this before. Would you provide in a way that you want to provide for this the way that you provided for them over there? Because you're that good. And God, you want to give good gifts to your children. And so you give us what we need exactly for the time in which we are living right now. You see, the thing that we see from generation to generation is this idea of creating and passing it on. Creating and passing it on. So literally, I'm standing on the shoulders of a previous generation of people that live by faith. And I learned faith from my friends and from my, like my pastors and, and different people in my life, or even from the different experiences that I've had. And so we begin to pass those things on. And in this season, we're, we're living because somebody else did something that allowed for us to be in this space that we're in right now, to have the freedom to express, to have the, the faith to believe that we could see God's kingdom come and His will be done right here on this earth. Because remember in the middle of this whole thing at the beginning, it got screwed up. Sin entered a picture. So even though God's purpose has never changed, the plan was a little bit different at that moment. And so the plan was always Jesus, right? You see, I had this thought this week. And the thought this week was simply this. What if we truly believe that we are on this earth right now for a reason? Right now for a reason. You're living right now in 2022, right? You're not living in 1922. Why? Because God determined that it would be best for you and what he's gifted you and what he's given you to live in this time right now. Think of how wasted a mind that was very technical would be back in the 1920s or in the 1800s. Like God has placed you specifically in this moment, in this time for a reason because he knows what he's put in you. He has a purpose for you. Solomon says that there's a time and a season for everything. That everything means you and me. Like sometimes we make these statements, oh, he went way too soon. But then when we make that statement, we're saying God doesn't know what he's doing. And God can take what has been really instigated by the evil one because God's original plan was never death. And he can make it or he can turn it for his purposes and for his good. Right? That's what we see. That's what we've seen from the very beginning. That's what we see up until this time today. But you and I were created for a purpose and for a reason for this time that we live in. So if you truly believe that, what things would change in your life? Would you take things a little bit more serious? Would you change the way that you live? Would you stop saying yes to some things and start saying no to some other things? Would you change the way that you spend your resources? And when I mean your resources, I mean like your time. Like if you understood your purpose and what God has planned for your life and what God wants to do in and through your life and all the areas that you find yourself in, would you change the way that you handle your time? Would you spend less time on Facebook and Instagram just scrolling mindlessly? Would you, would you find like yourself going, oh, I don't want that anymore because I need to do this because I know that the fruit over here is good and I know that God's um, purpose for my life is to be fruitful. And those things don't cause me to be fruitful. Now, they can be used for God's purposes. Don't get me wrong in that. But so many times, these are just things that just cause us to die, <laughs> right? Because we, as we scroll, you know, this little motion or this motion, we, we begin to compare. And we begin to go, oh, I wish my life was like his. Oh, I wish I had what he had. Because if I had what he had, then I wouldn't have to worry about it. Like, I could do exactly what God wanted me to do. And in that moment, we start limiting God. So like in this season, one of the things that God's really challenged me is to limit the outside voices. And the outside voices can even be what, what I'm seeing on a screen, what I'm hearing on the radio or on TV. Like limit the voices. Because if, I, if I'm going to do what it is that God's asked me to do, I need to hear His voice. I need His assurance. I need Him to speak life into the, this place that I'm at right now that feels very depressing. I need him to comfort me when things don't 
really go together the way that I thought they would go together. And then I, I get in this place of a little bit of despair. But then I remind myself that God's in control. And God has a purpose and plan for everything that happens. And He can make good out of, out of the bad things. And He can, as it, and it says in Isaiah, He can make beauty from the ash pile, from the garbage. Right? It's the beautiful part of life. So what would you spend your time on? What would you spend your money on? If we believe that we were here on purpose, it would change everything about us. It would change how we do everything. Can I tell you something? Jesus believed so much in his Father's created plan that he was willing to die for it. And there was one specific part of it more than others, and it was you and I. It was you and I. He died because he knows that God has a purpose and a plan for each and every one of us. For God so loved the world that he gave. He gave his son. He gave us what we needed to have eternal life, right? He gave his one and only son that whosoever believes in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. Like our purpose goes beyond even this, this earthly life that we live. Because our purpose ultimately is to worship God. And that can happen here on this earth and in heaven. Now, there's some things we won't be able to do in heaven, but we can do on this earth. And so while we're here on this earth, we want to fulfill the other purposes that God has for our lives. The other thing, though, that Jesus did was he set an example for us. He set the example of how we live on this earth on purpose. Like if we look at his life, what we see is we see betrayal. We see disappointment. We see like death. We see all these things, but we also, also get to see how he handled it. We also get to see that when he knew that there was someone that was going to betray him, they were going to deny him, he still bent down and washed their feet and served them. Like that's a different picture for us. For us, we just go, bye, we're gone. Like you're, you're, you're cut off. We don't need you anymore. Blah, blah, blah. Bye. That's not the example that Jesus set. Jesus also taught us that our time is limited. And just look at the life of Jesus, what he did in his 33 years of life, and really the final three years of his life. He understood when it was time and when it was not time. He understood that there was times where he needed to be with his father because what was going to be required of him was more than what he had. So he needed to be filled up with the boldness and the courage that his father would give him. He needed to understand who he was according to his father again, that he was loved and he was chosen. Right? Because when we understand those things, our identity is secure and we can move forward in the purposes of God. And I think the biggest thing that he showed us is he only did what he saw the father doing. And I think, I hope that in this year, like that's what we can look back and go, we did what we saw the father doing. We joined him in what he was doing. And here's the thing I love. Everything that we're doing, God has a bigger perspective of. So when we step out in faith and we, we go forward in faith in what we're supposed to do and we, we live on purpose, what we're beginning to see is that we're not just doing it for the here and now, we're doing it for the, the later. We're doing it even for future generations because God knows that what's done in this time is just the foundation for what will come years down the road, maybe years past when we're even on this, on this earth. But God is establishing something through our faith right now that we might not even see. Let's look at it this way. He's planting seeds, and those seeds will ultimately feed people way down the line. Like that's the picture. You see, so where are we going? Why are we talking so much about purpose? Because I believe then in these next few weeks, we're going to talk about what our purpose is as part of the body of Christ. And I believe what you're going to see, even if you're listening with a curious ear or skeptic ear, you're going to see like, wow, I, have, like, I feel that way at times. Well, because you were created by God and He has a purpose for your life and He doesn't veer from His, um, His purpose for your life. He puts into you right where you're at right now the same things that he puts into me right here where I am right now. The gifting, the talents, the abilities, all those things were given to you by God. And so you can either use them for earthly purposes 
or you can use them for kingdom purposes. We know that earthly purposes lead us to this way that leads to death. We know that kingdom purposes leads us to this way of life in which Jesus says is a full life, a better life than you could ever dream of. And so we're going to spend like the next four or five weeks in Ephesians chapter 4. And so I want to start with these words that Paul pens in, in verse 1 of chapter 4. And I want you to see the urgency and hear the urgency maybe in, in Paul's voice as he speaks these words to this church in Ephesus. He says this, he says, I beg you, I beg you. Okay, so like it's not, I beg you, it's a passionate, I beg you. Because what's to follow is something that it will embolden us, will give us courage, will give us the boldness. It will increase our faith to go, okay, yes, we've got everything we need to do what it is that God's asking us to do so we can move, we can go, right? He said, I beg you to lead a life worthy of your calling. For you have been called by God. Now let me just give you what this little word calling means. It means to live a life that conforms to the saved status you have with God. What does that mean? It means He has saved you from a life of hell. He has rescued you from the pit. He has encouraged you, loved you, like spoken words of life over you. So live a life that values that. Live a life that continues to tell a testimony of that. Let Him be the reason what he did for you, be the reason why you're doing what you're doing. So he says, live a life that's worthy of your calling. Live a life that's worthy of the price that was paid for your life, the salvation that is offered to you, the salvation that you're living in, the freedom that you're living in. Live a life that's worthy of your calling because you have been called by God. The Holy Spirit quickened, quickened that call in your heart and you responded to it. And he doesn't just stop there. He gives us these things. He says, and if you go back to last week when we talked about rejoice always, pray continually, and continually give thanks in all circumstances, like you see these urgency words here and again, and you go, oh, these are impossible again. But no, everything is possible with God. It's living a life worthy of your calling. It is um, living a life that conforms to the saved status before God. It's saying, my life is not my own, it's yours. What do you want me to do, right? And so he says this, he says, always be. Always be humble and gentle and be patient with each other. You're like, okay, that's impossible, right? I have kids. Like being patient, always being gentle, always, it's just, it just like I can't do it, right? But no, it is possible because of your safe status with God. He says, making allowance for each other's faults because of your love. He throws that in again, because of love, right? Our faith matters when it's expressed in love. That's what Paul tells us. Nothing else matters than right now than for your faith expressed in love. And then he says this, make every effort, not sometimes, make every effort to keep yourself uni unified in the spirit, binding yourself together with peace, right? For there is one body and one spirit, and just as you have been called to this glorious hope for the future, there is one Lord, one faith, one baptism, and one God and Father of all, who is over all and in all and is living through all. He's saying, here's a beautiful part about this. I created you with purpose, but I also created everyone with purpose. And what you got to understand is when that comes together in those who are called, like now all of a sudden it creates this thing called the body of Christ. And so we become one. Our purposes are mended together. But here's the beautiful part about it. And it's what he says in the next verse. However, however, he has given each of us a special gift through the generosity of Christ. However, even though we are one, he's given each of us this special, unique gift thing that you and I contribute to this oneness, to this body. And in just uh, next week, we're going to talk about the body of Christ. But Paul, throughout his writings, talks about the, the church as a body. And we understand the function of a body because we're living in one right now, right? Like we know the function of our hand. We know the purpose of our hand. And we know the purpose of our hand is not the same purpose as our elbow, right? 
And so, but if one, one thing says, well, I don't want to be a hand, I'd rather be an elbow, like now all of a sudden we got problems because we're not functioning the way that we are supposed to function. We're not living the way we're supposed to be living or doing what we're doing to contribute to the body. So over the next few weeks, we're going to look at it. What does it look like? What's your special gift? What are the things that God has gifted you with right now for this time, for this purpose, to see his kingdom advance? I believe that we're going to see things come out of these next few weeks that are going to just completely change our church. Because we're going to see that as we've been given these gifts, inside those gifts are other things that come out as we exercise and as we begin to walk in those things. Things like um, thriving, like moving forward, successful. We're going to see that. We're going to see a thriving type environment. We're going to see healing. We're going to see um, just this welcoming like um, atmosphere. We're going to see this, um, uh, what's, why can't I think right now? Uh, uh, we're going to see this like truth atmosphere begin to build out. Why? Because one of the things that we talk about is a teacher in here. And so he goes into these different things and teachers really are, are people that are giving truth. They're light givers. And we're going to see that. And then we're also going to see a place where people are free. Why? Because at some point, some part of the body began to live out who they're called to be and how they're gifted. And here's a beautiful part as we continue to go through. I know I just kind of slaughtered that thing, but you'll understand it in the next few weeks. But here's the thing. Paul said this. He says, I beg you. And I want you to hear me repeat these words to you as your pastor, as your friend, as CJ, and say this same thing to you. I beg you, I beg you to live a life worthy of your calling for you have been called by God and you were placed on this earth at this time for a specific purpose and a reason. God does not make mistakes. He's given you everything you need. He has supplied all the resources that you need to do what it is He created you to do. He's waiting for you to respond to that calling. You have been saved. You've been saved from a life of hell. You have been saved from so many things. So live a life worthy of that calling. Live a life worthy of the one who has saved you. Like This is the beauty of the gospel. Like we're coming back to this original heart and purpose of God for my life and your life. The one that Jesus died for. And I believe, I believe that in 2022, we're going to see some of the greatest life change. And it's going to happen because each and every one of us are committed to live out the calling of God in our life. And I know, you're sitting here going, I don't know what my calling is. I'm just working this job from 9 to 5 and 5. Well, your calling right now is to that nine to five job. And God's given you everything you need because everywhere he places you, he wants you to be on mission. Everywhere he places you, he wants to bring his kingdom because when his kingdom comes, everything changes. If you're complaining about your workplace, then bring the kingdom of God with you because he brings peace. He brings joy. That's what comes when the kingdom of God comes into those spaces. And so here's what I want to ask you to do today. Today, what I want you to do is I want you to write down all the places and all the things and all the responsibilities that you have in your life, in this season, in this day, right now, January 2nd, 2022. And then I want you to write down, God, what do you want me to do here? What's your purpose? What's your calling for me in this space or in this relationship or in my workplace? Whatever it is, whatever those things are. And then I want you to listen. Because I believe if you begin to listen and you begin to look, you're going to see what your purpose is because God's going to open up your eyes and he's going to give you eyes to see and he's going to open up your ears and he's going to give you ears to hear and he's going to open up your heart and he's going to help you understand the why. But you have to be willing. You have to be willing to kind of shut some things down, say no to some things so that you can can receive what God wants to give you. Because here is the whole point of this. I want you to see, and I believe your Creator wants you to see, that wherever you are, whatever you have, whatever you're dealing with, you are placed in this season for a reason. And here's the thing. You were made for this. You were made for this. 
There's nobody that can deny that because God's word confirms that you were made for this time and for this season. And God's word is very clear that he has a plan and a purpose for your life, a plan to give you a hope and a future, right? A plan to prosper you and not to harm you. Like that's what he promises. And so right now in this place, you need to understand that no matter where you are, you were made for this. So this morning, would you pray with me? Father, I thank you that from beginning to end, you just continue to remind us of your purpose for our life. God, we know that many years ago, Rick Warren wrote this book, What on Earth Am I Here For? And it struck a, heart, or struck a chord in the heart of many people because we so desperately want purpose. We want meaning for this life in which we live. And so, God, I pray that as we sit here, as we listen, that, God, you would give us, God, exactly what we need. You would show us through your word and through your spirit again what our purpose is here on this earth. And we would be obedient to take the steps that need to be taken. And it's not very hard, God. You're just asking us to take one step. And in that step, that's a step of faith towards the thing that you're calling us to do. And as we take another step, God, our faith begins to get stronger and stronger. And so we can begin to move at a pace that um, God is just, is beautiful. It's refreshing because we're living with purpose and our faith is strong. So God, I thank you that you created me with a purpose and that you have a plan for my life and that you order my steps. And so today, God, would you show us, would you speak to us, would you open up our eyes and open up our ears and give us hearts to understand what you are doing right here. God, I pray for revelation right now in each and every person that's watching this or listening to this. I pray that the spirit of wisdom and uh, wisdom would be just active and released in that place. I pray that you would give people discernment. And God, I pray even in those situations that, God, you would give them exactly what they need to understand what you're showing them. And then you'd give them everything they need to do what it is you're asking them to do because you don't send us out unequipped. God, you give us everything we need. And so, God, thank you that you are everything and that this year, you want this year to be different. And we declare that this year is going to be a year where we see things come to life, where things that were once dead are now alive with new purpose. And God, really what we're praying for is we're praying for revival. Revival in our schools, revival in our community, revival in our city and in our state, in our nation and in our world. May your, may your spirit move because your church is living on purpose. It's living on mission. It's taking your word serious. So God, use us. Use these hands, use these feet. Do what you want to do. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Would you take a moment? Would you fill, write that little piece of paper out? And would you just focus in on God? Say, God, would you show me? Would you speak to me clearly? Would you open up my ears to hear this? And Blake's just going to sing just a final part of the song, and then I'll be back to close us out. But don't move through this time too fast. Like, spend these first initial days of this new year seeking the face of God. And let's see what He does as we live on purpose and we understand that we were made for this, this time. When the rain fell, when the floods came, when the wind blew, I was okay. You were right there, you're in every step I take. When the night falls, when my heart aches, if I stumble, I will not break. You'll be right there. You're in every step I take You're my shepherd, you're my keeper My provider, my protector You surround me, you're in every step I take You're the goodness, you're the constant You're my first love and my future You surround me, you're in every step I take 
you are with me Father you for me A fear will never conquer me Cause I belong to Jesus I'm never alone I'm never abandoned Or fear will never conquer me Cause I belong to Jesus You're my shepherd You're my shepherd you're my keeper, my provider, my protector. You surround me, you're in every step I take. You're the goodness, you're the constant. You're my first love and my future. You surround me, you're in every step I take. You are with me. Father, you're for me. Fear you never conquer me Cause I belong to Jesus I'm never alone I'm never abandoned Oh, fear you never conquer me Cause I belong to Jesus Oh, fear you never conquer me Cause I belong to Jesus Oh, fear you never conquer me I belong to Jesus. Lord Jesus, we belong to you. Lord, we are your children, your sons and daughters. And um, Lord, you protect us, you guide us, you teach us, you love us. And we are never, ever abandoned, Lord. And so we thank you for that. We thank you for your faithfulness and your mercy. And um, Lord, for all those who are watching today who are struggling, who feel abandoned, Lord, who are hurting, who are sick, um, who are worried, Lord, we cast out all fear and we just say, Lord, in your name, that they may be healed, that they may know you, that they may see you more. Um, and we pray that over, I pray that over me, Lord. Um, and so, Lord, I just uh, I thank you um, for, your, for your goodness. And we just ask that this service would um, lead us to you, um, that we would know you more. Jesus, we love you, and it's in your name we pray all these things. Amen. Well, I hope you felt encouraged this morning. I hope that you're determined to live 2022 on purpose. If you need prayer this morning, we'd love to pray with you. You can reach out to us. The number is 517-917-0415. We would love just to get in contact with you, spend some time just encouraging you and just taking some time and praying over your needs. The other thing is this, just a reminder, this week men's Bible study starts, next week women's Bible study starts. There's no better place to grow than in those small intimate moments where you're just digging in, or you're opening up the Bible and you're studying the Bible together. And so I hope that in some way this week you begin to live with more purpose. And as Paul said, I beg you, Live a life worthy of the call of God because God has called you. Let's see what God does as we live on purpose this year. We hope you guys have a great week. We'll see you back here next week. Bye.